Support for the show comes from Carolina Forward, a nonpartisan organization dedicated to building a more equitable, democratic, and prosperous North Carolina. You can learn more about their vision and values at carolinaforward.org. The North Carolina State Highway Patrol. What cigarette do you smoke, Doctor? A contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. Rock and roll has got to go. And welcome back to the Hometown Holler. I'm Daniel Ayers. And I'm Quinn Ray. Well, hey, dude. Welcome home. Yep. <laughs> Here we are. We, we, we finally have a holler to holler in. That's right. That's right. We can be loud. We've got our own studio now. So I do miss the vibe of the kitchen table. So I actually, I actually do too. Um, it, was, it was fun. It, it was um, fun. And we were just getting to the point of um, making it just work, right? Like yeah. we knew how to do it. It was functioning. We were starting to grease the wheel and everything was running pretty smooth. And then we up and change some shit. I'll tell you what I won't miss is What's having to set up every episode and yes. take down every episode so that I could play a board game or eat dinner. <laughs> That's um, right. You know, to just be able to like plug and play. Yes. Yes. It's really nice. Um, we're wrapping up a month of um, discussing the year of public schools. Yeah. Um, and we had some really spectacular conversations with um, a, a, a variety of guests. Yeah, Dyson Passion, mm-hmm. uh, Eugenia Floyd, and Jen Mock. If you haven't listened to those episodes, go back and and uh, and take a look. You kind of owe it to yourself. Um, I, I learned a lot. Uh, I learned a lot about how, how education policy is determined. I learned mm-hmm. a lot about um, what public education means. And I mean, I yes. said this on the Gen Mock episode, but again, it's not just K through 12. It's lifelong learning. Yeah. And there are programs, public programs that impact learners of all ages. I mean, I'm definitely guilty of thinking when I think of public schools, I instantly just think of K through 12. Yeah. When Jen came in and was talking about adult education, you know, I've always been a proponent of continuing mm-hmm. education and that doesn't have to look like college, right? But just yeah. you know, read a freaking book, yeah. right? Just continuing to uh, educate yourself. Um, but I didn't think of adult education as under the realm of public education. But wow, does our local uh, community college do wonderful things for the adult yeah. learner? And and uh, touching on Eugenia's episode, one thing that that sticks out to me, something she said, was that you know when it came time to go to school, the person knocking on the single wide door wasn't the legislator letting you know about your opportunity scholarship That's right. or your school voucher. It was your first grade teacher letting you know, asking, are you okay? Do you have everything you need? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just the, the importance, uh, the important role that our public educators play, not just as teachers, but as care caregivers. Right. Um, so anyway, excellent episodes. Y'all check them out. For um, sure. Today we're, we're kind of doing like our own recap of, of, of the topic. I mean, we're not going to, um, rehash every episode but i think we want to talk more about public education and and since we recorded those episodes new things have come to light that is right there was a a a, a primary um for the office of state superintendent and it didn't go as planned no i mean we currently have our state superintendent is a a registered republican and um she is in office she was running for re-election and she got Trumped, yeah, literally, by, literally, literally trumped <laughs> um, by a a lady named Michelle Morrow, um, who actually was a um, guest here yeah. in Alamance County a, a few weeks ago, or uh, like last week. Okay, yeah, uh, the, the local um, uh, GOP county convention um, was you know uh, down uh, actually ironically at a public high school, <laughs> and so <laughs> Michelle Morrow shows up, and, and folks, you'll see why that's ironic in a second. Um, the only reason we know this is because a, a, a photo was like leaked um, yep. or posted inadvertently when when the county GOP posted uh, photos of the proceedings. Um, Michelle Morrow was nowhere to be seen. That's right. That's right. That's what I was going to say. You got me. You beat me to it. Sorry, I didn't mean to scoop you. Um, and and which is is highly unusual. To, to you know, you have a, you have a a candidate for statewide office stopping mm-hmm. by. Don't we want to show that off? Don't we? You you put everybody else in your pictures on social media, but this one. So my question, Quinn, is 
Why? Why? Why do you think that that we had this visit from an illustrious candidate who who just um, scored the biggest upset of the state primary? Yeah, and, it's pretty weird having yeah. an incumbent getting just smacked. So we had that happen, and then nobody in this county wanted to to, sh- to show her off. Wanted to well, Ed Priola did. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, his his standard of company. I mean, it's all about freedom. That's all about freedom. All That's about right. Freedom. And I guess this I'll is uh, what she. Uh, <laughs> You know, because she's, she's, Michelle's been notorious for going on uh, Twitter rampages and uh, social media just rants. So so let's start there because she scored the upset. And I think most people, their reaction was, who is she? Right. I, I had never heard of her. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and, and pretty quickly, um, we, we begin to get a picture of who she is. <laughs> yes. Um, she is... Um, not a public educator, um, is, is not uh, someone who has ever championed public education. Um, she does champion social media. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she knows how to use that keyboard. She's made national headlines mm-hmm. um, for her social media posts. Um, not recent posts. These are posts that happened years ago. But, right. they've, you know, things stick around on the Internet. And, well, and, and not too many years ago. No, either. like two, two or three years. Two ago. or three yeah, years. Yeah, within, right. within the past election cycle. That's right. And uh, in those posts, she mentioned that uh, you know she would she would enjoy a pay per view um, showing of uh, you know a public execution of Barack Obama by yeah, firing, firing squad. squad. Wow. She also made similar remarks towards Roy Cooper, um, old Roy, our governor. I mean, if I, I that like wow. She's made him uh, with current Biden when he was talking about he's yep. going to mask all of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said we should follow the Constitution and kill right. all traitors. Yep, death death to all traitors. So that was the starting point. That was our introduction. Um, Running for state superintendent. St- state superintendent. And and interestingly enough, and I don't know, people can fact check me on this. Maybe this will change by the time we, we, we post this. Um, but as of now, I... Uh, the Republican Party, to my knowledge, has declined to say whether or not they will end up supporting um, their their new candidate, their new nominee for the office uh, because of her, her controversy. Um, so, so that's that's who we have on one side of the ballot. We on the other side we have Mo Green, um, who who is a public educator who has worked in our public schools uh, in Guilford County, so yep. right beside us here. And we're actually hoping. I mean, we'd like to have an. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. We want to have all the candidates on. Oh, everybody that is running for uh, council of state. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Democrat, Republican, independent. Yes. Yeah, statewide candidates. Uh, this so, is your open invitation to the holler. And if you know anybody who's listening, um, who knows connections to these people, uh, hit, hit us up, send us some DMs, email us so we can get these people on. Yeah. So we actually will reach out to Michelle Morrow and yeah. accept an invitation to have her on. And it's, she'll it's, probably it's, block us like she does everybody else. Yeah. But, but like, like I, I would like to talk to her in good faith. Like, it's not a gotcha thing. Right. Um, I mean, you know, if you're running for office, um, you, you you owe it to the voters to, to make an honest showing. Right. Like, one of the things she said about the, you know, calling for the death of, of political leaders by firing squad was that it was taken out of context. And, okay, back it up. Like, I, I, I would like to understand what was the context. Right. Or, and, or and what, how are Twix bars witchcraft? That was the latest thing is that um, – yeah, Michelle Moreau posted um, that that Twix is in, is is promoting or uh, practicing witchcraft, which is only a problem. And this is what I find interesting about that tweet. Mm-hmm. She talked about you know we, uh, Twix, you know, it must be shunned now because they're accepting and practicing witchcraft. That's you know witchcraft is only a problem if you believe in witchcraft. So what I find yeah. interesting is that it shows that this is somebody who does believe in sorcery and witchcraft. Yeah, but man, during. Uh I mean, we've seen Hocus Pocus. Yeah. They didn't believe in witchcraft. They just blew out or lit the black candle, and then, holy shit, witchcraft happens. That was the one of the few films my grandparents had on VHS, was <laughs> Hocus Pocus. It was that in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man, Phantom Menace was a VHS? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It, was, it was one of the last before yeah. DVD. Holy cow. Anyway, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Phantom Menace was one of the last of the cassettes. <laughs> um, anyway. But I yes. love Mo Green. Yeah, Mo um, Green's awesome. Uh, looking forward. I think we're in the process of scheduling his appearance. Yeah, we got an email show, today, which is really exciting. Um, so, so there is a um, meaningful choice on the ballot for the office Absolutely. of state superintendent. And and I feel like this, uh, you know, everybody when they go to the ballot box, most everybody knows who's running for president. Mm-hmm. Most everybody knows who's running for governor. 
maybe attorney general, but the more you get down the ballot, it's party politics. Yeah. Um, and that has its pros and cons. Mm-hmm. I think that's a whole different episode to talk about just pulling levers yeah. for parties. I think mostly cons, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely a whole conversation. Well, I mean, we uh, Anita have. Earls would, would mm-hmm. argue differently, right? To, to some degree. Sure. Um, but needless to say, you know, Michelle Morrow, she might be more scary or as scary as Mark Robinson. Um, and yeah. I think we're going to have some moderate Republicans who look at Trump and look at Robinson and go, you know what? I don't know. I can, you know, vote for those people because they kind of mm-hmm. know them. Right. They're not going to know who Michelle is because she's going to be in the blend of the ballot. She's going to have an R by her name, and yeah. people are going to pull the trigger. So we need to make sure we're letting people know. She also has a great name. I mean, alliteration. <laughs> we love it here. Yeah. Uh, Mo Green is also a great name, though, I will say. You've yes. got two great names on, on the, on the, on the, the ballot there. Um, I, I, this is funny. I was As I was researching kind of this episode, there is a Michelle Moreau on Twitter who is not Michelle Moreau. Get but, out of here. But her handle is Michelle Moreau, spelled the same way. With one L. With one L. Okay. And and she was posting, She's this is this is a, a tweet from Michelle Moreau, not the candidate, just North Carolina citizen. Actually, I don't know if she's from North Carolina, but just Michelle Moreau, okay. fellow American. <laughs> Truly wild situation I'm dealing with. So there's this crazy-ass lady from NC that shares my name. <laughs> I love her already. One L and all. She's a right-wing extremist who has said hateful, dangerous things. Seeing my name on a national level associated with this on my birthday week has been surreal. So I can this, only imagine. So this is this is the next tweet. She said, it's been absurd and nearly comical to see my namesake twisted into such a bizarre opposite. I've actively stayed away from posting about politics because I find it endlessly toxic to my soul. I get it. I've yep. heard. But some things can't be ignored, especially when getting attacked from fellow Dems. I guess so she's a registered Democrat okay. named Michelle Morrow. How wild is that? She says, if I can counter her noise for even a moment, because I think she's getting lots of attention on social media. Oh, I'm sure she's her handle is Her handle is Michelle Moreau. Yeah. I, Michelle Moreau, she says, would like to encourage Democrats in NC to vote for at Mo Green for NC. <laughs> Registration deadline is October 11th, and then there's a, a, a link to... Oh, Michelle uh, Moreau yeah, is, I, endo- that's, is in... Right. You can't make this shit you up. You can't make it up. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And, 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 and so I think... Um, Man, when serendipity works out to the finest degree. You, stranger than fiction. You couldn't write it. <laughs> um, so so we'll, we'll learn more. Um, I mean, that, that race is going to be an interesting race. Oh, in, sure. in a way that it what wasn't going to be a month ago. Not right. that it wouldn't have been an important race, but like now it's spicy. Yeah. Um, one of the things that... Um, oh, look, you look like you were going to say something. I didn't no, 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 okay. no, 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 no. One of the things I wanted to touch on since we um, had our discussion with our previous guests, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, talking about the year of public schools and all that, was we, we did touch on the voucher program quite a bit. Um, but I never felt as if we, we really discussed it. Super. Um, and, and, and I think for good reasons. There were so many other important things to right. talk about. Um, but but I, I, I actually think having done more research and more of a deep dive into the impact of, of the new school voucher program, mm-hmm. or at least the expanded school voucher program, I thought this might be an important thing for us to touch on. Today. Sure. I mean, especially after, you know, when uh, Dyson ended, he said, you know, the government, uh, the governor had homework for everybody. Right. Every time he visits a public school or he talks to candidates or people. And one of those uh, pillars of homework is to d- denounce this school yeah, voucher. Put a moratorium right. on, on the vouchers until we fund our public schools. That's correct. Which is important. We're not anti-private school. No, absolutely not. Um, if that's what you want to do, do you. Yeah. Do you, fam? A- absolutely. And and so Michelle Morrow, kind of, this is my segue here, you know, she has called our schools indoctrination centers. Mm. And as I looked into the vouchers, I, Michelle Morrow is right. Here, bear with me. Okay. There is massive indoctrination happening in our classrooms, but it's our private school classrooms. <laughs> okay. And, and, and let me qualify that. Okay. So, so to bring folks up to speed, under the Republican supermajority, billions of dollars have been. With a B. With a B. Billions okay. have dollars. Yeah, exactly. Like Bill Gates billions. <laughs> okay. Bill Gates billions. <laughs> have been. Uh, God, there's alliteration showing have, its have face been again. siphoned from our public classrooms and, and given to private schools. Mm-hmm. And when people think of private schools, and, and this was me, I was thinking of Ravenscroft, Durham Academy, Greensboro Day School, uh, you know, like almost prep schools. Right, right. Um, 
BCA, exactly. Burlington uh, well, School. Well, okay, so you mentioned BCA, Burlington Christian Academy. That's exactly right. Over 88% of the schools receiving public dollars are religious schools. Okay. Now, now, now and again, this doesn't seem alarming at face value. Because lots of folks go to church. Lots of, lots of folks That's are right. religious, right? Like, in this country, one of the core tenets is religious freedom. That's right. So, uh, okay, why, why is the fact that 88% of the schools receiving public taxpayer dollars, why, why is that concerning? Well, these schools operate with almost zero accountability, zero oversight. They're allowed to pick and choose which students they accept. Okay. Based on things like religious affiliation, uh, sexual orientation, or even IQ. Interesting. Well, not interesting. Like, I mean, it, it's 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 yeah, it is. I mean, it's 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 kind of blew my mind. Yeah. Um. But 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 we knew that, right? We knew that private schools had that ability. I think a lot of people make the assumption that well, if they're receiving public dollars, they must have to play by public rules, or they must have to accept students on a on a you know in the way that a public school. Well, does. especially with the narrative of it being pushed it's that this is choice and this is opportunity for the kids that couldn't go to private schools, but right. it's all just talking about financially because the kids with disabilities that can't go to private schools don't get the opportunity scholarship to go if the school decides. Absolutely. No. So, it, and that's what's ironic is that this actually is a big push for school choice. However, it's not students picking schools, it's schools picking <laughs> students, right? The, the schools have the choice in who oh they accept. So, so to, to give you an example, and, and before I, I get into this, I want to thank um, the, the researcher, the guy who, who, who brought us this data. This is um, Justin Parmenter, um, who, who is, uh, to my knowledge, a former public educator who investigates this stuff and, and does the deep digging. So I want to uh, – this, this is I, I did not do the investigative yeah. um, uh, journalism shout out, here. Shout out to him. Yes, right? thank you, Justin. Yeah. Um, but, but what he found was really striking. Um, <laughs> Okay, so you know we, we talked about how these schools can cherry pick whoever fits their religious, intellectual, even racial criteria. Yeah, whatever fits their Plato mold. Right. They can... I'll give you an example. So Fayetteville Christian School got nearly two million dollars in taxpayer money this year. In a year. Yep. But they will not admit students who are Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, or even what they deem quote the wrong kind of Christian, right? So, so if you're Catholic or, or not, or, or mainline Protestant, right? Like if you're not a specific sliver or branch right. of the Christian tree, you are not eligible for admission. It's definitely those Methodists. And, and then this is to say nothing of, of non-heterosexual students who the school handbook calls perverted. Hmm. So, so people could say, well, okay, well then just don't go to that school. That might be the only school in your community. Right. You know, like the only school that's not a public school might be a Fayetteville Christian school. Right, so you're either public so school right. or this school. So then you have North Raleigh Christian Academy who won't accept, doesn't, states that they do not want students with IQs below 90 because those students are difficult to teach and won't succeed. Again, you know, I get it. You, I think there's a place for these schools in America. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm with it. I can get behind, like, uh, the, the Raleigh school wanting to have students above said, I think it's terrible saying IQ. Well, well private schools can, set, can, can do what, if they're private, truly private. You can do what you want. Do what you want to do. And, and, and I'm with it. But damn it, boy, if you're going to use my tax dollars to take right. away from my kid, who we choose to go to public schools for multiple reasons. One, I'm, I'm a big public school um, advocator. Um, but secondly... I don't really have another choice, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, not this is it. Th I mean, this this is what it's doing. Well, over eighty percent of families, at least in our community, would agree with you, right? In that right. boat, right? I mean, most people, it, this needs to be driven home. Are public school people. That's right. Um, okay, so so it's it's also again, uh, sorry, getting get excited. Uh, here. Get excited here. Yeah. Um, it's it's not just um, about schools discriminating against who they pick. I want to talk now, um, sorry, discriminating when it comes to who they pick. I, I want to talk about some of what, what these schools are promoting. Yeah, that, that's the big kicker for w me. Because I mentioned indoctrination. What's mm -hmm. the indoctrination that's happening? So um, are you familiar with the Seven Mountains? Uh, 
Not re- I mean, I know Seven Day Adventist. So totally different thing. Okay. S- Seven Mountains is different. Um, uh, and is that re- a re- is it a religion or it's is a religion? It just the, a- well, the reason you're not familiar with it is because you're in, you're not a far right Christian nationalist. <laughs> <laughs> it's a doctrine. Okay. So so it, it's 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 a it's a set of beliefs. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the the really condensed version. There's a whole book. Okay. That espouses this 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 this, this doctrine of the Seven Mountains, but essentially. Um, like the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, type? the seven mountains of symbolize religion, family, education, government, uh, media, arts, and entertainment, and business. On the surface, that's so that's it's all of society, yeah, pretty that's, much. That's... And the followers, the people who adhere to this this the seven mountains mm-hmm. doctrine, um, it, it's it's a it's a Christian belief system, very extremist that that is training students to. Um, commandeer each of these seven mountains, right? So education, government, media, we need to take over. Or in their terms, you know, it needs to be our dominion. But but isn't that like just manifest destiny in its case? Like we're, we're heading so, west, so we're going to so spread you're, it? So you're, you're onto something here. The, the belief says that ultimately by achieving dominance over education, government, media, right? By, by bringing up warriors, religious warriors, cru- crusaders, right? Crusaders. Like literal crusaders. Yep. And, 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 um, infiltrating, uh, you know, these seven mountains, government, media, arts, education, family, ed- entertainment, business, all that. Um, there will be significant spiritual changes across the nation, possibly leading to the end times as prophesized in, mm-hmm. you know, religious scripture. So, so th- this is a belief system that is, is overtly espoused and promoted at many schools who receive public dollars and and that's what I'm 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 not I mean again, religious schools should be able to teach whatever they want to teach. That's right. But when you're taking public dollars, the public has a right to know that 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 you know. Uh, I'll give you an example: Daniel Christian Academy, located, which by the way, great name. Whoever named it, I I uh, I, I as Daniel approve, um, is in Concord, North Carolina. Okay. They've been receiving public funds um, through school vouchers since the uh, start of the Opportunity Scholarship Program back. 2014, 2015, okay. they've gotten uh, almost 600,000 taxpayer dollars. Which isn't terrible amounts of dollars in 10 in, years. In, in t- yeah, in the scheme of things, right? right. Still, still, still a lot public of money. dollars. That's $600,000 that isn't going to supporting special ed teachers and right. overcrowded classrooms. Not having enough administrators Absolutely. in the schools. Um, I mean, I'm sure our friends in Cabarrus, in Cabarrus County would would wish that money were distributed, <laughs> right? You know, but but yeah, in the scheme of things, not as egregious as it could be. But this academy, like others, actually says that our goal is our mission is to prepare students to engage uh, with the seven mountains of influence. This this ideology, which is concerning. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not. That that is the Christian religion, mm-hmm. though, right? I mean, is to it's make an, it's sure evangelical, you, right? Yeah, you, you tell it to you tell everybody about you it. Witness. You witness, try to bring it. You witness. Yeah. I went to church you, camp. I mean, I'm I'm I'm, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm not necessarily mad that that private school and there's people that believe that. No, the that's seven not the issue. That's mountains. not the issue. The issue is it's my tax dollars, right? right? Mm-hmm. And we, and I think this blurs the line. Right now, we're talking about education. Um, but even here in Alamance County, you know, the church and state separation, our county commissioners, they open up the meeting with a moment of prayer, right. a, a Christian prayer. Right. Um, you know, when Bob Bird was sitting on it, that, that was the one time in many years that Alamance County had a Democrat, um, a progressive sitting on the board, and he would do a moment of silence. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so To he, each their own kind of to thing. To each their own, and he adhered by the separation of church and state. Right. Um, but here, it's definitely not doing that, yeah. and so that just frustrates me um, more than what they're teaching. Well, it's, I mean, I'll put it this way: Can you know when when when? Like, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I feel comfortable saying sure. that Michelle Morrow is very supportive of of this project, right? I mean, that's unquestionably, unquestionably right? Yeah. So, okay, I don't think that support would extend to opening a a Buddhist academy. Or a Hindu academy, right? Right. So it's right. really not religious freedom. It's 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 a specific Christian, national Christian nationalism. nationalism. You've talked about this. I've heard you talk about it in the context of hypocrisy. 
<laughs> Thanks for throwing that to me. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it, it's funny because we hear this word indoctrinization thrown around all the time by conservatives and Republicans. Indoctrination. What did I say? And and indoctrination. Indoctrination. Yeah, that's okay. No, no, indoctrinization. That's what it should be. I mean, it's like mixing <laughs> immunization with indoctrination, which is which is. I mean, every time you say that word. Um, you know, Rudy Giuliani's head explodes. Explodes you know, a little exactly, bit in front, yeah. in front of the garden exactly. center. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I've actually been to the Four Seasons. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on my way back from, from New Jersey last year, I, I drove by the Four Seasons Total Landscaping. And we should we should hold a press conference there. I mean, we could drive to the Four Seasons Mall we in should, Greensboro. That's an, we should, folks, <laughs> stay posted. We're going to have a meeting at the Four Seasons. Oh, that would be great. Anyway, so hypocrisy. Uh, so so yeah. the hypocrisy involved is... Talking about Michelle Morrow, you know, she's screaming on Twitter um, about how our public schools are just indoctrinating our kids. It's just indoctrinating think tanks here. And then she fully supports Mm -hmm. this seven mountain pillar teaching. Yeah. And with the Opportunity Scholarship, I guarantee, and it's probably a small amount, I don't know, but you're going to have some parents who are like, all right, I'm fed up with public school for whatever reason. Yeah. this opportunity scholarship comes and they're like, okay, I have an opportunity to send my kid to a quote unquote better school. And the only option is, you know, the Daniel's Christian Academy. Yeah. And they no, send no them relation, there. folks. No, no relation. No relation. And they send their kid there. Mm-hmm. They're not Christian mm-hmm. or they don't practice well, it as one They said. wouldn't get in. There's a, you, ha- you have to, for most of these schools, there's a, there's a testament of faith. You actually have to prove that you at home conform to the teachings of the school. Mm. So if your kid is straight, but a parent is not, you know, is LGBTQ, you, you can't get in. Oh, okay. okay. So, th- so actually, I, the kid wouldn't even make it that far. To, to some of these mm-hmm. crazy yeah. ones, yeah. right, the extreme mm-hmm. ones. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I'll take Alamance, for instance, mm-hmm. Burlington Christian Academy. I think they have a statement of faith. I could be wrong. Somebody correct me. They might be, but, yeah. man, I know plenty mm-hmm. of kids sure. that uh, went there, mm-hmm. um, or Alamance Christian Academy, yeah. um, who went there. And, you know, it's not their gig. It's not right. their family's They're not crusaders. Gig. Right, right. They're, they're definitely not searching for that holy grail right. and um, witnessing to everybody mm-hmm. that they see. And now they're getting ready to be indoctrinated with this just blatant yeah i mean it just goes to show that one person's indoctrination is another person's moral code right yeah. that's a good you know one. one person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter yeah so yeah. there's just that tension there um i want to leave folks with with some something uplifting um we actually haven't talked about the, the leandro plan on the show mm. do you want to do you want to uh, kind of like i guess bring our listeners um the good news that there is a roadmap for public school success. Um, well, if it's followed or not, if it's is, right, is a different question. But let's assume that it is. Let's, again, like, let's land on a hap- happy note. Let's leave people like with a nice little party favor. Okay, so this, the Leandro case is, what, 30 years old now? Something like that. And um, it's actually being heard again in the, yeah. uh, the courts, which is um, very disturbing. Um, but on this happy note— Well, then the too long didn't read version, the Leandro case is the case that guarantees students their right to a— sound and high quality education well our, our and, North and, carolina and state constitution guarantees our, you're right that. our constitution I believe it's article nine the guarantees that the case uh is is what guarantees the uh, adequate funding that's right that's right yeah thanks for calling me on that that's good yeah you're right um anyway so yeah they um ruled that um our public schools um are not getting um an adequate sound based education based on funding um, I think when this happened, there was like nine public schools that um, sued the state, um, and they called it the Leandro case. Mm-hmm. And the this was just battled over and over and over in the courts. Um, but they ruled that it was some, what, $144 billion or something like it's that. a lot of money. To, yeah. It is a lot of money on the surface of it. But, you know, just right here under the Leandro plan, Alamance County, you know, total funding increase by year 28, fiscal year 28, and would be about $57 million. Yes. Yeah. Up 38%. Right. So, so we mentioned Carolina Forward at the beginning of the, of the program. If you go to their website, they have an interactive map where you can see how much your county would benefit from, oh, that's the, great. from this plan. It's super cool. Drag a cursor over. So that's, you know, Alamance County where we are. By fiscal year 28, 2028, $57 million dollars total funding increase for schools. That's an additional 110 instructional support positions and an extra almost $8 million 
for children with disabilities and new funding. Right. Now, like a county like Lenore County uh, down east, they're looking at a 48%, uh, which is $29 million in, in their total funding increase. Um, new funding for children with disabilities, almost $5 million, which is a 99% increase. Wow. Just imagine what that could do. Yeah. Bladen County. Um, I, I have a lot of friends in Bladen County, by the way. Uh, when I was in 4-H, I want to give a shout out to Luke Hill. And uh, anyway, and, yeah, yeah, I was and, wondering and why like, you picked it. This uh, dude, I've, I've got a soft spot in my heart for Bladen County. Okay. Also, yeah. the Improvement Association. If you've never heard it, the NPR. Uh, sorry, I think it's maybe New York Times. It's whatever. There's a podcast. Okay. That takes place in Bladen County. It's wild. Really? It's about it's about um, vote harvesting. Okay. It's really interesting. Huh. And listeners, check it out to the Improvement Association. Improvement yeah. Association. It was like a big thing across the country. I think North Carolinians, because it's in our backyard, we just like, sometimes you miss those things. Yeah, so without close. a doubt. Anyway, Bladen County gets huge funding increase, additional instruction support positions of plus 170%. Wow. And then lastly, McDowell County up in the mountains. Mm-hmm. Uh, total funding increases up 45%, $20 million. Um, new funding for children with disabilities, an additional $4 million. Well, for their budget, that's over 100%. Yeah. So, like, we, there is a roadmap. Right. There, there's a plan involved. There is a plan. So um, all it requires of us. And we can afford it, too. We totally can afford you it. Know, we Go can online and Google North Carolina Rainy Day Fund. It's the largest it's ever been. Yeah. So, so we can afford it. Um, and we just got to vote. Uh, do you want to let we we announced it on our um, social media, but before we close, do you want to let remind folks of, of the good news, the good word? Oh, with our special guest. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm really excited about this. You know, when we started this podcast, it started uh, just as an idea on the back porch with late nights and um, alcohol and yeah. smoke. I and already fondly remember those nights. I yeah. mean, it's, it was like less than a year ago, and it, oh, it, I feel it just feels like the golden years. You yeah. Know? This <laughs> past weekend, it definitely felt. Felt more like it because uh, the weather was starting to turn. Mm-hmm. Kristen and I were able to sit outside, and I'm like, man, I cannot wait for the back porch in again. Yeah. Um, but we were, we were just talking about doing this podcast, and look at us now. We're we're in this studio. We ha- we have a space to record uh, that I'm proud of. That that we should be proud of. That people can come here and see the hometown holler. And, uh, and be, be a guest, be friends of the holler. Help themselves and to our open bar. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we've got a little bar here. Um, I mean, it's just, just it, it's grew more than I, than I thought it was going to do. And then now, you know, we were talking about, can we get these, you know, this person or this person? And we're getting ready to get Jeff Jackson. I remember and, early on just being like, man, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, maybe, maybe one day. Yeah, one day. One day we could get Jeff Jackson on the podcast. Three months later. It's happening. Yeah, he, he's going to be on. So we're going to record um, an episode with him. Um, I think we're going to try to do a theme in May yeah. um, about law and order. Yes, right? that, that's the plan. So don't hold us to it, but May episodes are going to have a theme around law and order. Um, make of that what you will. But <laughs> but I'm really excited about those episodes. Yeah. We have some great conversations uh, in the works. Um, so, so look forward to that folks. Uh, any, any final words? No, you know, just make sure, uh, you, you like and subscribe and share our stuff. Um, if you haven't heard, um, Instagram, uh, meta has put a more of a governor on, um, political content. And so you can, where it doesn't, if you're not following a political page, you're not going to see other political pages or right. their content's not going to just scroll across your feed. Make sure you go to the three little bars at the top, uh, scroll down, click to not govern that. Right, so that you can get other content. So you can get other content. It, so Meta's move, I have mixed feelings about it, because on the one hand, you know, like, it prevents the next Pizzagate. But right. on the other hand, you know, it means that, like, I don't know, we're not getting as many views. And those two things, to me, like, would it almost be worth having another Pizzagate so that we could get the word right. out? Yeah. I'm being facetious. Obviously not. We don't want another pizza right. gate. We don't need a pizza <laughs> gate. But 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 I'm with it, right? I mean, yeah, I, I kind of understand it. what they're trying to it's do. It's a huge liability for mm-hmm. Meta to have just like crazy content out there, unmoderated. You right. Know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, it is unmoderated. In in a way, they're actually trying to drain the swamp. Hmm. You know, that's something to think about. Anyway, um, all right. Well, folks, thanks for listening. Uh, we will be back with another exciting episode of the Hometown Holler soon. Until then, stay frosty. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Later.